Scorpio, 2022 is all about you and your relationships. On the one hand, there is a lot of activity in your relationship and commitment sector, right? With Uranus and Taurus and the eclipses going down there, you're going to experience radical shifts that you may not anticipate. On the other hand, with the south node in your sign and the eclipses going off in your sign and in your first house, you are changing in a way that's making you a better person. But it's going to show you what's really not working with you and what you can improve. Either way, this year is all about you. If you want to know more, keep watching and I'll explain all about it. everybody it's your girl mel of divine feminine works and as always i hope that this video finds you well and in excellent spirits if you're new here welcome if you're returning welcome back this channel is everything tarot astrology spirituality and manifestation so if those are the things you like if those are the things you love if those are the things you want to learn more about don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you'll always be notified when I come out with new content. And speaking of content, head over to Instagram and follow me over there at Divine Feminine Works. Every day, I've got a whole bunch of content on tarot, astrology, spirituality, and manifestation. All right, so head over there and follow me. All right, so I am so excited to be bringing you this video because this is the video of the year. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, this is the one you definitely want to watch. Actually, this series, because I'm going to be breaking it down by sign, okay? But this is the the 2022 astrology forecast. One of my favorite phrases is when you know better, you do better. And if you know what's coming ahead in the coming year, rest assured, you're going to be prepared and you're going to know exactly what to do. All right. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So Scorpio, for you, 2022 is a really dynamic year. Along with your sister sign Taurus, you guys are experiencing a dynamic shift not only in yourself, but in your relationships, because we've got the nodes changing signs. The south node is going into your sign while the north node is going into Taurus. We also have four eclipses that are happening rapid fire between Scorpio and Taurus. Needless to say, you guys are changing on a very dynamic level personally. And this year in particular, there's going to be a particular focus on your relationships. Being that the North Node is going to be in Taurus and Uranus is in Taurus, both of which are in your seventh house of relationships, expect major shifts with respect to that. All right. So let's take the year chronologically and see what's in store for you. To start things off, in January, we have Venus retrograde and Pluto in Capricorn. Now, this already began at the end of 2021, but basically, once the year opens, we're all going to be thinking about relationships and money and how those play out in different areas of our lives. And for you, Scorpio, this is going down in your third house of communication and ideas. So Venus retrograde is really about reevaluating, rethinking, and remembering things. And if we're talking about what your third house, the third house covers communication, short distance travel, ideas, your neighborhood, your immediate vicinity, all of those things. The third house is the busy bee house. It's sort of the house of your day-to-day -day activities. And I feel like with Venus retrograde, you guys are going to be rethinking how you relate to people generally, particularly the people around you, or maybe even your siblings or extended family members. You guys are going to be reevaluating these relationships. And do they make sense? How do they fit in your life on a practical level? What can you do on a day-to-day -day basis to make these relationships better or make these or make these relationships more? more in alignment with who you are and what you think, right? Because this house covers, um, you know, your thoughts as well. Pluto is also in Capricorn. So this area of your life is changing in a very dynamic way. Pluto also covers control. So some of you may be thinking about your day-to-day -day activities, or your interactions with people in your immediate vicinity in terms of how much control they either wield over you or how much control you wield over them. All of that is changing and it's going to change for a while because Pluto is going to remain in this area of your life until about 2023, 2024. 
So this is all very much going to be at the forefront of your thoughts once the year opens up. Next up in April, we have a partial solar eclipse in Taurus, and this is in your seventh house of relationships. Solar eclipses are all about new beginnings. They happen at the new moon lunar phase. So with this going down in your house of relationships, this may be about this may be a good time. And again, this is going down in April, a good time to really commit yourself to someone. This may be starting a new relationship, taking a relationship to the next level. This house also covers business relationships and contracts, basically anything that you bind yourself to. So this may be a time to bind yourself or commit yourself to a business endeavor, to a contract maybe, or like I said, to a relationship. Perfect time to do that at the solar eclipse. Eclipses are also the way, the universe's way of shifting things in our lives. So at that time, you may find that certain people become eclipsed into your life. You're meeting new people that you want to bind yourself with, that you want to enter into a contract. So be aware of who comes into your life, particularly around April. It may be for your highest good, okay? Moving on next in May, we have Jupiter going into Aries. Jupiter is the planet of uh, blessings, abundance, good fortune. And in Aries, it's going to bless you in a very bold, big and dynamic way. And this is all going down in your sixth house of work and health. So what's going to happen is around this time, you guys are either going to see that your health improves especially your physical body. Um, maybe you want to start doing more exercising because Aries is a sign of physical activity. So perhaps if you start doing some exercising at that time, the health benefits are going to be very beneficial and they're going to happen very quickly, okay? You may also notice that your general health overall improves. In the work sector, you may find that you get a new job you get more responsibility, you get a promotion. All of those things are really up for grabs when Jupiter goes into Aries. And Jupiter is gonna remain in Aries between May and October. So between May and October is a very auspicious time for all of us, okay? So you're going to want to um, do what you can because the little that you do is going to, the results are just going to be like astronomical. They're gonna be much bigger than you anticipate, okay? Also in May, we have the second eclipse, which is a lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio, your sign. And this is going down in your first house. Lunar eclipses show the culmination of a manifestation. So seeds planted at the new moon are full grown plants at the full moon. And with a lunar eclipse, it's going to happen in a major way. Lunar eclipses also shed light on things that have been hidden, maybe show you things that haven't been going well. And being that this is going down in your first house, it's all going to have to do with your physical body, your personality, your outlook on life, your attitude. So at that time in May, there may be something that happens that shows you about yourself. Someone or something may be like a mirror to you and mirror exactly how you've been presenting yourself for better or for worse. Whatever happens, it's really meant to eradicate perhaps bad habits a bad attitude, negative thinking. This eclipse is really going to trigger those things so that they come to the surface so you can eclipse them out of your life, okay? The next major time in 2022 is going to be between October and November. The first thing that's going down is Saturn square Uranus. This is like the aspect of the year. We've been dealing it through we've been dealing with it throughout 2021. We're still going to be dealing with it throughout 2022, and it's going to be at its strongest between October and November. Saturn square Uranus is really a conflict between boundaries and structure on the one hand and freedom on the other. Now for you, how this is going to play out for you is perhaps it's a particular structure or perhaps there's particular responsibilities that you have at home or to your family. That's really a staple in your life. You have other people that really depend on you, but there's also this level of rebellion that you're also going to be feeling, particularly as it relates to your relationships. Now, remember, there was a partial solar eclipse in your relationship house back in April. So in April, you may have started a relationship. You may take a relationship to a next level, or you've bound yourself to something like a business deal or something. Come October, November, there's going to be a conflict between that new relationship and your responsibilities at home. 
So you're going to have to work out how to make this work. It's going to be a little tense. There's going to be some frustration, but if you can find a way to really balance the two, I feel like everyone is going to win. Okay. Next up in October, we have Jupiter retrograding back into Pisces. Again, Jupiter is the planet of good luck, good fortune, and abundance. So it was in your sixth house of work and health. Now it's going to go back into your fifth house of play, romance. It's also going to be um, the house that covers creativity and children. So at that time, you're going to be really thinking about things. These things in your life are going to go well, not as well as they normally would because Jupiter is going to be retrograde, but you're still going to experience an uptick perhaps in dating, an uptick in perhaps your creative endeavors. But at that time, you're really going to want to think about what's important to you, particularly what makes your heart sing. Okay. Again, in October, we have a partial solar eclipse in your first house, okay? So remember I said back in May, there was a lunar eclipse in your first house. And at that time, maybe things about yourself that weren't the best are gonna come to light so you can eclipse them out of your life. Now that those things have been eclipsed out of your life, now in October, you can implement new things, new personal goals, new body goals, new outlook, new attitude. Those are sort of the things that you're gonna wanna implement at the partial solar eclipse in October. And the last thing that's going down in October is gonna be Mars retrograde in Gemini. Mars is a planet of action, particularly bold and dynamic action, but when it's retrograde, it's like you feel unmotivated, you feel blah, you feel less energy, less drive to do, do things wherever Mars is located in your chart. And for you, Scorpio, Mars is also your ruling planet. So you may feel this more so than anyone else. You and Aries may feel this more so than anyone else. Mars retrograde in Gemini is going down in your eighth house, which covers sex. It covers death and rebirth. It covers transformation and it covers shared resources. So with Mars retrograde in Gemini, when it comes to being intimate, <laughs> so Again, we're going back to your seventh house. You had this whole new relationship, this, this energy of a new relationship back in April. Now, when Mars goes retrograde in your eighth house, where you may have been feeling like, okay, I really want to get intimate with this person. Maybe I want to move in with them. Maybe we want to join bank accounts and really start taking our relationship to the next level. Come October, when Mars is retrograde, you're not going to feel like doing that anymore. You're going to be less inclined to want to take it to that next serious level, okay? And it's obviously going to affect your relationship. And Mars is going to be retrograde in your eighth house from October until January of 2023. So by the end of 2022, you guys may be in a relationship, but it may be stalled a little bit. There may be this energy of not really taking it to the next level. And that brings us to the final event in 2022 which is in November, there's gonna be a lunar eclipse in your seventh house of relationships. So again, we had this breath of fresh air with relationships in April. Things are kind of stalled and stagnant come October with Mars retrograde. And now in November, now you're gonna to start to see everything that may not be working with this relationship because the lunar eclipse is going to light it up. It's also gonna show you how far this relationship has come or how far any relationship or anything that you've bound yourself to has come, all right? So the end of the year is gonna end on a somewhat quiet note, particularly with Mars retrograde. But for the most part, there is going to be this emphasis on relationships for you and a, an emphasis on you as a person, particularly eradicating those qualities, attitudes, negative thoughts that are stopping you from being your best self. So either way, this year is all about you and your partners. All right, my loves, that has been the astro forecast for 2022. I sincerely hope that you were able to glean some information that may be helpful to you in the coming year. As always, it is my pleasure and a privilege to be bringing this information to you. I wish you nothing but the best. I mean, the absolute best for 2022. This is going to be a year to remember, and I sincerely hope that it brings you everything that your heart truly desires. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next year. Take care.